Hi, I'm Vivian from Figure in Australia. I'm forming the personality that I want to have in the future and that I want to have expressed on my face when I'm a very old lady. More love, more peace, more patience, more insight, more joy. Billy Meyer explains that we each form our own personalities with our thoughts and feelings with the precision that a sculptor sculpts a work right down to the last detail. And this is all based on the understanding that thoughts are the formative might. And that's something we have to just test for ourselves. And of course, we shouldn't just take that on as an idea without really putting it to the test. Billy explains in his book, The Psyche and elsewhere, that thinking is a tremendous power that forms the human being exactly as he or she thinks. Another way of saying that is, what we love, we become. Of course, Billy's not talking literally about sculpting, <clears throat> just as well. But it's been an interesting thought exercise because I've had to think about what really comprises the things that I want to become. What makes somebody look loving? Is it just a benign smile? Or are there more things like understanding, knowledge, attentiveness? Is there more to it? Also, I've had to come to recognize that the whole process of the sculpting itself has to be learnt and has to be practiced. And it's definitely an ongoing process. I can tell you this is taking me quite a few goes just to get to this point. But isn't it wonderful to think that we can choose what we want to be and form the mighty thoughts accordingly? We might start with something like Billy's, what Billy describes as the seven main virtues of the human being. So, moderateness, steadfastness, industriousness, honesty, discretion, carefulness, benevolence. If we fill our thoughts with these things, or anything for that matter, he says, it's only a matter of time before we become them. I think if we really understood our true nature, if we came to understand it through study and attentiveness of ourselves, we'd recognize the, that the controls for ourselves are within us and not with some external power. And that the thoughts, the might of the thoughts, has an influence not only on our personality, a formative influence, but also on our entire lives. The human being always determines and forges his or her own destiny. Consequently, he or she never ends in the gutter or in jail as a result of the tyranny and terror of an imposed destiny determined by others, or as a result of some kind of circumstances beyond his or her control, rather solely as a result of the might of his or her thoughts through which the way through life and the circumstances of life are determined. If we understood this teaching about the formative might of the thoughts, we come to recognize, I think, what Billy means in his teaching about self-responsibility and responsibility. It's not some unwelcome teaching from an a unjust authority figure, as we might have <clears throat> accepted in the past from our religious leaders. It's a wise teaching from a human being who recognizes that we are self-determining beings and it makes no sense and it's not at all logical for us to look outwardly for our guidance for the for the actual steering of our lives of course assistance is always a good thing to get from elsewhere but not to be actually steered or expect to be steered from an external being or external power but due to our entrenched, age-old indoctrination, religious indoctrination, it's very difficult for us to recognise that we're even looking outwardly, I think. We might not be 
directly following a god or an angel or something like that, but we still might be looking outwardly to be led by a political leader or a technology giant or even letting ourselves be led by a fast food giant. These are the different forms it can take. It reminds me of uh, what Billy explains in uh, the Psyche book where he says that on the whole human beings simply allow themselves to drift like a cork in the wavy water sometimes up and sometimes down. They each simply let themselves be pulled along without defending themselves against the ups and downs and without the willingness to determine their own way. How would it be if we just let our personalities form according to the everyday factors of our lives, quite unconsciously, according to our regular habits of thinking? I mean, a lot of what we think on a daily basis, quite habitually, if we're not consciously trying to do otherwise, are negative thoughts to do with the negative things that are going on in our personal lives or in the wider world. Despair, despondency, anguish, anxiety, hopelessness, cynicism. Do we really want those sorts of things to form our lives? If we want something other than those to form our lives, we have to actively think of those qualities, develop those qualities and make them a habit in our thoughts. And just keep maintaining that. We want to keep going with that and not neglect it and just become something like this out of carelessness and inattentiveness. And that makes me think about what Billy explains in his introduction to meditation where he explains that the majority of all suffering in the world that goes on in relation to our psyche and our morale is not to do with conscious badness. It's to do with inconsiderateness, over haste, unrestrainedness, inattentiveness, just those things. And if you think about it, all those things are just examples of us not recognizing the importance of respecting the truth of our reality in all its detail and to use that as guidance for how to live. The thought, aside from the spiritual power, is insurpassably stronger than any other power, much tougher, mightier and more undestroyable than all matter and outer influences and conditions. Whoever is able to master their thoughts and change their thinking to a good form, masters and changes their destiny into a good one. Due to that inattentiveness and lack of respect for looking at the truth of our thoughts, I think a lot of us can actually kid ourselves into thinking that we're being more responsible for our own thoughts and the direction of our lives than we really are. We might think that we're free of religious belief and think quite independently, but it can sometimes be the case that we're still looking to our fellow human beings too much to steer our lives. We might be looking at our friends, acquaintances, our partners for our self-esteem or to tell us what to think about various things or to even tell us what to read and what to think about what to read. It can happen in subtle ways. These are the things we need to be attentive to if we really want to take control of our own lives. Billy's teaching of self-responsibility includes a whole range of things. One really important one is recognizing that we need to be responsible for our own feelings. So even if someone near us is being abusive and unkind, that's no reason to give them the, the control of how we feel about that thing. It's also really important to make sure that the thoughts that we're sending out into the world, our thoughts naturally transmit out to the world, are good and constructive thoughts because they don't only affect our personalities and our personal lives, but according to Billy's teaching, they can affect people on the other side of the world 
and cause them to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do. It's really worth considering. Also, there are the more predictable forms of taking self-responsibility in that we take action against injustices that are going on in the world if it's possible to do that in a logical and rational way. Even the Pliaran and Billy have taken our need for self-responsibility into account when they've presented the information to us about themselves, the Pliaran, their beam ships, who Billy Meyer is. All this information we've had to think about. They could have just turned up, the Pliaran, and popped out of their beam ships in front of us all so it was undeniable. But then we wouldn't have thought about it. We simply, on the whole, would have just thought, OK, that's true because we saw it. But we really need to do the thinking about that. And the beam ship photos that they provide, all this evidence, the hard evidence of their reality, amongst all the really compelling stuff, they've got things that look really questionable, like that beam ship that's dangling on a string, like a pendulum or that one that looks like a spray-painted household items. Why would they do that if not to make us think? That's my view. Why would they put those components into the teaching, into the presentation, into everything, if not to make us think? And the exchange of opinions makes us think, rather than to shirk our responsibility for working it all out in our own minds. And then when Billy's talking about the world leaders and the terrible state of affairs in relation to all of that, he does talk about just and good people who are amongst the governments, who are in government, but who still act irresponsibly due to their entrenched religious tendencies, religious belief tendencies. And they, although they're capable of righteous and rational thinking, they're still just following their governments and authorities religiously, unthinkingly, and thus allowing terrible things to go on on this world. So the whole self-responsibility thing starts with very personal matters to do with ourselves and who we want to be and how we feel, and extends to, of course, how things are going in the whole world because we're all partly responsible for all of that according to Billy and so it appears to me and finally <clears throat> I'll explain what Billy has to say about responsibility from Goblet of the Truth he says Bearing the responsibility is always the first thing you have to do, but by far the largest number amongst you human beings of Earth, you push off the bearing and exercising of the responsibility onto your imaginary godheads, tin gods, angels, saints, and to idolised human beings, as well as onto your next ones or other fellow human beings. Because on the one hand you see the responsibility as a burden, with which you do not want to encumber yourselves and, on the other hand, because the bearing of the responsibility is, out of cowardice, too much for you, or because you think that you are not responsible yourselves. There is another important point to make in regard to this responsibility teaching, and that's once we get to understand how it works for ourselves, that we are the ones that are responsible for all of those things and driving ourselves a bit the way we're responsible for driving our own car and we wouldn't expect somebody else to be steering that. We then come to understand that we have no business trying to steer somebody else's life because that's their business. And so any, f any attempt to persuade somebody else or get them to be something or do something is totally inappropriate for the same reason. So with all that in mind, I hope you've enjoyed questioning and testing and having 
a good look and think about everything that I've been saying. And if you want some assistance with that, you're most welcome to go to our webpage at au.figu.org and you can read a lot more information there and follow any links that we've provided there. Thank you for listening. So until next time, Salome.